Father, I thank you. I bless you. I honor you. I thank you for your faithfulness. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. In John chapter 15, verse 25. But this happened, that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. They hated me, and they had no cause. None. Quite to the contrary. Because of the works that he had done in his father's name, you would think he would be loved. But they hated him without a cause. In Psalms 109, verse 2 through 5. David, speaking by an inspired word, said the same thing about what would be Jesus' reality. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful have opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are my accusers, but I give myself to prayer. Thus they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. They hated me without a cause. In John chapter 15, verse 18 through 19. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If the world hates you, it hated me before it hated you. If you, If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. The world will hate you because they hated him first. And so I'm looking back over my Christian journey. How many times did people hate me without a cause? They didn't know me. They might have heard me say something, but they had no actual knowledge of who I was, you know. People hated me because I submitted to the will of my husband. Do you know people will hate you? Now, I understand the world might hate me for that, but when you find Christians in the church, believers, they hate you because of what and who you represent. represent. In my case, they might have called me archaic. You know, you have people in this generation that were called would call a woman like me archaic. They may even say I'm old-fashioned. They might even might say that I'm old school. All of these are negative connotations because they hate me because they have been taught systemically to hate someone that they don't even know that might be representing uh, someone else. In my case, God. Uh, They hate me, and I don't even do submission to my husband that well, but they nonetheless, (laughs) they hate me. Uh, You know, even before I was saved, if you will, I was of the mindset, you know, my husband could be talking to whoever he's talking to, and I would, for example, get his plate put his stuff on the plate, and bring it to him. And do you know people would hate me for that? Why are you serving him? He's not God up in here. What in the world do that have to do with you? Why do you hate me simply for being obedient to what I perceive is the will of God for my life? Conversely, I shouldn't hate you for whatever you perceived to be the will of God for your life. So what's with the hate? Why why are we hating? Because this hatred, believe it or not, is not innocent. It's very dark and it's very negative. And actually, it produces diseases, both natural and spiritual, on the inside of us. This is not something to be played with. So the world, the systemic system that exists in the world, teaches us to hate God, teaches us to hate each other, teaches us to hate black people, white people, teaches us to hate poor people, teaches us to hate hate rich people, the whole gamut. In fact, there's a sponsor to hate in the world, and and he's called the devil. He sponsors hate. And And through the system that we live in in the world, it teaches us to hate. So scriptures gives us clues as to why 
the church and the world of his time taught them to hate him or why they hated him. Now, understand the world hating, but the hate that's in the world is now front and center in the church. So how did it, in, in a big way, of course, it always existed in some measure in the church, but in a very big practical way, the hate that's in the world has moved <clears throat> to a center place in the church. So therefore, we don't know that sometimes, even though we are being church or uh, are uh, in church, we are being also taught to hate and to hate the very God that saved us. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So we are being subjected to the same kind of hate that's in the world because when we love the world, we hate the Father and we hate His Son. So more and more Christians, believers, are, are perpetrating hate, but then they have the name of the Lord, Jesus, in their mouth. Romans 2.24. They are beginning to if you will, be diseased by this very thing called hatred. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, as it is written. So if we're hating and we're supposed to be Christians, they can't be convicted of their hate against God and everything that represents God because we're being seduced slowly but surely, into a culture of hate. So in very deliberate ways, through, through indoctrination and education, the church is, is being trained to hate each other based off religion, class, color, race, and of all things, politics. We're being, we're being led to the slaughter on the 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 altar of hate and it is not of the lord and that's the name of few second corinthians 11 3 through 4 and also 12 through 15 but i fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived eve by his craftiness so there was a deception of the woman she wasn't she didn't with her will she was deceived and seduced to, if you will, eat of the forbidden. Continue. And that's what's happening today. We are being seduced. And the question is, why are we being seduced to hate? Continue. So your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. So the, the, the doctrine of hate is being preached by another Jesus. It's not being preached by the Jesus of the scriptures who said they hated me without a cause. Continue. Or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received or a different gospel which you have not accepted. That is a completely different gospel that the church is hating its own members based off the philosophy and the merits, and the values of the world. You may well put up with it. Verse 12, But what I do I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles, apostles of Christ. Continue. And no wonder... For Satan himself transforms himself so into an Satan angel of light. So Satan is transforming himself as an agent of light. And we are being transformed by deceitful workers that are operating now in the church as if they are light bearers, but they preach the gospel of hate. Continue. 
Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So those ministers can be in the church as well as outside the church in media positions to transform uh, uh, themselves as agents of light. But what they're doing is perpetrating hatred. And we in the church are licking it up. And the question is why. We understand why the world might hate us or does hate us. Well, why are we hating on each other in the church, the house of God, the, the, the tabernacle of the, of the living God? In Galatians chapter 1, uh, verse 7 through 10. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if you, we... They want to pervert the gospel of Christ, which gets into race and colors, and politics, and all of that stuff, that is a perversion of the gospel, because scripture is very clear, John 3, 16, it's everywhere, God so loves the world. <laughs> what are we doing? He loves the world. Continue. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you. So if there's someone, if myself, all of a sudden get seduced or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than the gospel of God so loved the world. And they hated him because God loved the whole world. Because there was a thought that God only loved a certain group of people. But when Jesus came, he transformed that whole philosophy, if you will, to show that God loves the world and there was purpose for everything. And there are people that work for the sponsor of hate that don't want you and I to know that nor understand it. Continue. Then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any so other he's, gospel. He's reiterating a point. He wants to make sure that that point is driven home. That if anybody preaches another gospel other than the gospel of God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son to bring all pieces, all mankind to a central understanding of a one thing that God loves the world. And he brought his son or sent his son into the world to save us. Save us from who? Save us from the devil, yes, but also to save us from ourselves. <laughs> Continue. If anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Or do I now persuade men? Thank you. Because we have rejected the true and tried way. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 18, verse 15. Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to worthless idols, and they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk so in pathways. So we are moving from an established declaration from God that God so loved the world that he gave. So I and you, when we obey the will of God for our lives, we are now seeing it's archaic, old-fashioned, and may be intolerant. And that is to perpetrate hate. Because when you stand for God and people hate you, you know they hated him first. Continue. To walk in pathways and not on a highway. So I'm ancient. And so they said, well, that ancient way is not for today. Says who? <laughs> I need to know who's saying because if that person is human like I am and they have to go through the same things that I have to go through, they have to take showers, they got to go to the bathroom, they get sick, they, da, 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 da. then I need more authority than that <laughs> just because you said it. 
because I subscribe to someone that says they love the world. And it is the ancient way. It is the tried and true way. Every generation in history that tried to get rid of this tried and true way has failed. And they will fail in this generation too. No matter what the sponsor of hate teaches. And Psalms 36 verse 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, an oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before There's his eyes. There is no fear of God. They've been taught out of, of the fear of God, a final accountability, uh, a justice day, a day of, of, um, of justice. They've been uh, educated out of it. John 8, verse 32 through 36. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But the scripture makes a declaration of a promise. It said, you will know the truth. And if any man do my will or do my doctrine, they will know whether it's true or not. So people talk about the doctrine, the reason why they don't do it or don't believe it, because they won't do it. So if you do what the Lord says for you and I to do, we'll know the truth. It's, it's really that simple. And that simplicity of that gospel is what tricked up uh, the woman because she didn't believe it could be that simple. <laughs> that you will know the truth and the truth set you free. So when I slipped into my role of being submissive, to my husband, I, I discovered the truth of God's word in every aspect of my life, which, of course, dripped down to my children and my grandchildren. And that's what the enemy, the God of this world, the devil, doesn't want to happen. I'm just playing a role. It doesn't define me or make me less than or better than. I'm just playing the role that God has given me for his purpose, which is always good. I found out now all things do work together after all. It didn't have anything to do with whether the person was hard or soft, you know, because some people, so I would never submit to so-and-so, a, a man like I'm, I'm submitted to because he's hard. What does that have to do with you? Why are you in it? <laughs> No one asked you to because everybody already know you're not going to. We get it. <laughs> We're fine with that. That's not a problem. But why are you over here and hating on me is the issue. And you in church singing the high praises of God. Continue, John 8, 32, 36. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. We don't have any, we don't have uh, we're not slaves to anyone. You, see, we're not slaves. We've never been in bondage. We've never been a slave to anyone. No one has, has put a yoke on our neck and make us do anything because we be free up in here. Continue. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of you sin. You are a slave. <laughs> I'm a slave. See, we say, oh, we're not... You do exactly what your master tells you to do. <laughs> and you say you're not a slave. I can see the results of you obeying your master, sin. I can see the things that you're hiding in public because you're afraid that people can see that you're a slave. So you hide all of that. You come as if you don't have a ball and chain around your ankle, but everyone here clanging every time you walk among them. So we are slaves to sin. We are slaves to the devil. Continue. We have a master. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. 
in John 8, 37, 47, because he's getting ready to tell them who they, why they're why they such haters. I know that you're... Because they have this particular person who is their father, and he sponsors hate in the church. Continue. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. You're hating on me. Why are you hating on me? Why are you seeking to kill me? For, for what good work are you stoning me for? What is your problem? You do the works of your father. You saw him do certain things and you imitate him. Continue. A man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. When they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able You're to not listen to my word. To listen to my word. That's how much control your father has over you. To the place that you don't know you're his personal slave. You think you're free. But someone has to be your father. Someone has to birth you. And he said, continue. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He's a hater. Continue. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. He can't stand in the truth. He can't take the truth. He can't be made free. You and I can, cannot be made free until we accept the truth about God, about ourselves, and about each other. Continue. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? Thank you. The church is under that kind of influence. As I said, the church has always been because it's in us. That's one of the things that we inherited from the father, the devil. In other words, the seed that came from him is in each one of us in lesser and greater degrees, but it's there. But when you feed it, it grows and you become diseased as a result of it. Hatred negative, negatively impacts the nervous system, the immune system, the endo, endocrine system, and that is secretions that go through the body by the bloodstream. So this is a very real thing. It's, it's in the natural as well as uh, in the spiritual. Generally speaking, I said generally, hateful people are usually sick people on some level. They're either in their head, in their spirit, in their soul, and in their body, because hatred brings bitterness and, and all the resentment. Anger is a chief player in why there is so much hatred, because we're angry. And what are we angry about when Jesus is the Prince of Peace? What are we as believers, as Christians, what are we so angry about? Because we can't get what we want. What are we so angry about because someone has something that we think we should have? Or God took a loved one from us, whatever our issues are. But from that anger comes hatred unless the anger is checked. And we will allow by the power of the word of God and the spirit of God for God to speak to us and tell us why. And we accept, because he said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What are we so angry about that's breeding this kind of hatred in the church? In the natural, in the natural, hate or stress can lead to artery clogging, plaque, or heart disease. And in our generation, young people, which is unheard of, uh, the amount of heart disease 
that are in young people because they're angry and it leads to hatred. They can't find peace. And, and we, as adults, sometimes are not providing them with that by having stable backgrounds and stable relationships with God and with each other. One of the reasons why I submitted to the will of God in my life, and that is to obey my husband, that my children would be settled, would be calm, or would have tranquility in their lives. And somebody had to be sacrificed. <laughs> Guess who it was? <laughs> like I tell you, I don't do submission that well. But I'm doing the best I can by the power of the word and the power of the Holy Ghost. Doing the best I can. But someone had to be sacrificed in order for my children to maintain the degree of peace and, and degree of joy and happiness and all this kind of stuff or stability. That's another word that's coming. That they could be that stable. Someone had to be sacrificed. And there were many a days when I was submitting with my archaic self to the will of God for my life that I had to cry out to God and say, it's not worth it. And then when I'm crying and snotting my eyeballs out, I hear a knock on the door. Mommy, I got something to show you. He said, is it not worth it? Yeah, no, it's worth it. Let me go. <laughs> Let me go. There's a reason why God put weight on us that we don't enjoy carrying. Where was I? So how, how people are being impacted by this anger and hate and particularly Young people. Jeremiah 17, verse 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes his flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. Even he to said, give, I, I search the heart, and I test the mind. Continue. Even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. In the natural, hate stems usually from anger, and anger is connected to the liver, and the liver is very closely associated with the, with the kidneys. So it's all interconnected. And that's why in some ways we are sicker generation than the generation before us. And you might say, well, uh, um, we're healthier. But I venture to say that we are pill poppers, you know, in order to uh, dull the pain of the stuff that's going on inside of us. We have more access to pills, to pop. We have, you know, back in the day, when in my generation, uh, most of us didn't even have health insurance. Uh, of any kind. So if we got sick, we had to plead with God. And our parents gave, had all kinds of homemade recipes and remedies for our different ills. So there was a trust in God that was elevated in my generation because we didn't have it, the kinds of things that they have today. But that's uh, uh, sometimes just a substitute for what God wants to give us is real deliverance from the diseases that come about as a result of what I'm talking about this evening, uh, hate. Um, Genesis 4, verse 5 through 10. But he did not respect Cain and his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So this anger produced hate, continue, which produced, of course, murder where he killed his brother. That's good. Psalms 38, verse 3 to 5. 
There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger. Nor so any- God has an anger too. So we can provoke God to anger. And sometimes the reason why we have a, a diseases in our body is directly tied to uh, our own disobedience, our own hatred, our own anger, because we as members so-called of his body or come to his temple declare that we are moving away from the ideology that puts us in this bubble of hating other people for their position. You know, we live in a very volatile uh, world, even in in terms of our politics uh, that are concerned. If our candidate doesn't win, as if God, uh, if our candidate doesn't win, that's because God is in control. If our candidate wins, it's because God that is in control. We don't have to hate each other because you want someone to be elected as opposed to who I want. Let the Lord have his way. How about that? Let God decide ultimately because he will decide. We can cast our vote, and we should. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But ultimately, isn't God in charge? So what are we hating each other about? To despise someone. When you hate someone, there's a despising. When you detest or loathe. I mean, when you get to that place, which hopefully I get to, where you loathe another human being, uh, we're on real slippy ice. Because God so loved the world. God has given each spirit a body to come into the world. And you and I, if we're not careful, we can loathe the plan and the purpose of God. Just like in the Old Testament, when the Hebrew women, the king of Egypt told them, look, you got to get rid of these babies. They hated them. In Herod's day, He was looking for one child, and he killed them all looking for one. We're in volatile times. We have to be very careful that we are not perpetrating and spreading hatred because of our own selfishness. Leviticus 26, 15 through 16. And if you despise my statutes, or if your soul abhors my judgments, so that you do not perform all my commandments, but break my covenant. If you despise my commandment, that I have a way that is right. And a man's way might seem right in his own sight, but the Bible is very clear. It leads to destruction. Continue. I also will do this to you. See, you're going to get sick when you despise me. Like that. Continue. I will even appoint terror over you, wasting disease and fever, which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Far be it from me, for those who honor me I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Joel 5, verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore do not despise the chastening of the Almighty. Isaiah 30, verse 12. Therefore thus says the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression. You despise this word. This word that's coming out of my mouth. It is not my word. I'm just a messenger. But when you despise the authentic, word of God, then there's a hatred inside of you because that word is being sent to convict. The Holy Ghost is being sent to convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So when we despise the very word of God, even though we sit in church, we pick and choose what we like and what we don't like because what we don't like We despise because it's going to expose our nakedness. It's going to uncover us that 
we are just like those that we say we have left in the world, but we have not left uh, the things that they value in the world, which is hating. We've adopted their way. So when the Lord told the children of Israel, when you go into the land, do not adopt their ways, their way of thinking, their value system, the things that are important to them. Don't adopt that stuff because it's going to take you away from me. In um, Matthew 6, 24. Did I give you Isaiah 30, 12? Yes. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty two. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? So you come into the house of God like you are better than someone else. Why would you despise the house of God to the extent that you hate each other and you don't want people talking to you or sitting next to you in the house of God? Hating someone, to you, they might not have any value as a person. They ought to be destroyed and they're unworthy of life. That person or group, uh, in your judgment, based, deplorable. Have I heard that word before in our politics that a group of people are deplorable? Is it that way with us that we think people are deplorable, that they're based, that they're dumb, that they're ignorant? And that those words are coming out of our mouths as Christians. They're rubbish. They're garbage. That is a hate that you can see why when people possess it to that extreme, they have no problem with murder and killing and cruelty and every abominable thing you can think of. First John chapter 3, verse 10 through 15. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil, and his brothers righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. First John chapter 4, verse 20 through 21. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Ephesians 4, 31-32 Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Matthew 5, verse 44 But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Romans twelve twenty. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Deep down inside, sometimes we hate others because we are afraid of what we have become. The devil knows man is not perfect. He does not have the righteousness of God, which is pure and untainted. He knows he can trip us up when we use our own righteousness to evaluate a situation instead of employing and asking for the righteousness of God to prevail. He knows that. So he entices us into hating uh, the imperfections of others, their flaws, their faults their weaknesses, and their shortcomings. He schooled us in the stereotypes of every race, every color, so we can be intolerable of other people that God has given the right to and the will to make choices of their own. In Matthew 15, verse 21 through 28, then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. 
My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away. Tell that dog to go away. Tell that unclean person to go away. They were taught in their culture to consider those kinds of people that way. But he's going to do a master class, okay, and, and show them that God loves the world. That suffering may endure for a moment, for a while, but there's joy coming in the morning. Every race of people have had a suffering of major proportions that happened. And they might say to God, why? Because God says, your ways are not my ways, nor your thoughts my thoughts. And so, therefore, they think God is not good because he's allowed certain things to happen for his own purpose. Because he sees the end, and most of the time, we only see the beginning. Continue. Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, She yes, said, Come Lord. on, God. Come on, God. I'm, I'm a bark this time. I got to stop barking. Because we don't know him like that. We think that our hate is justified. And God says, it's not. I don't care what happened. What happened to you? I sent my son in the world to show you that I love him, but it pleased me to bruise him because I knew the end. Continue. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Great is your you faith as you and a God that you don't know and have never seen. But somehow or another, something inside of you says to you, I don't care. I'm going to have to operate in faith. Even though they told me this is a mean God. This is a God that segregates. This is a God that make a difference with people over one people over the other. I'm going to take a chance up in here. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to say, God, please help me. He's something else. He won't allow you or me to put him in our boxes. He doesn't fit. He said the heavens of the heavens of heaven cannot contain me. And your little box of a church doesn't contain me at all, period. I can't get any part of my body in it, so I'm going to leave only my name. Jesus reminds us from time to time that we are sinners. That's why they hated him. Because he would tell them, you're not as pure and clean. You're up in church, but you're not pure. You're not clean. <laughs> You're not good. I am. I am. And he didn't say he was. He said, my father is the good guy in all of this. But I'm in sinful flesh. How am I going to be good? <laughs> they hated him. John 8, verse 48 through 59. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not rightly, do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan? You are a dog. That's what they were saying to him. You are nothing to us. You're base, you're ignorant, you're rubbish, you're, got, you're deplorable. You are dog. Didn't we say that you are dog? And you got, not only are you a dog, you got a demon. You out of your mind. The hate, the vileness of their hate towards him. He said, you hate me without God. Why are you hating on me? What's your problem? Because I'm telling you, you don't, you don't honor my father. So my father is not your father. And you are a sinner. Continue. Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. 
Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know you got a devil. That can't be the truth. Continue. Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And you say, If anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who do you make yourself out to be? Who you think you are? Who in the world do you think you are? With your, you are dog. We hate you. But why? Continue. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my oh, honor is nothing. Oh, because I honor my father. That's another reason why you hate me. I actually obey him. I obey him. I honor him. So when you and I obey God, do you know what we're going to get? Haters. <laughs> Continue. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. I'm, look, I've had an experience with God. I got saved. I didn't even know I was going to get saved that day. He came for me against my will. And I got saved that day. If I tell you that not only did that happen, but for the 40 something odd years I've been walking with God's spirit, uh, experience after experience, I know certain things about it. Granted, it doesn't fill up a thimble. I get it. <laughs> but, but I still know certain things and I know them to be true as a result. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. Continue. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews, the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at Immediately him. Immediately they wanted to kill him. You know why you can't hear my word? Because you can't hear. You blocked it off completely. You are content in the satisfaction that comes from hating because there's a pleasure to hate, just like there's a pleasure to love. There's a pleasure in hate. People wouldn't do it if it didn't feel a certain way, at least initially. In verse 45, in that same chapter, through 47. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? They couldn't convict him of sin. They couldn't convict him, of, even though he was in sinful flesh. They couldn't convict him of sin. And when people can't convict you of sin, you know, there's another reason why to do what? To hate you. <laughs> Continue. And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Luke 23, 13 through 25. Then Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, said to them, You have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people. And indeed, having examined him in your presence, I have found no fault in this man concerning those things of which you accuse him. You accusing him of something, you hating me, but why? What is the cause? What is the reason why I'm being hated? Continue. No, neither did Herod, for I sent you back to him, and indeed nothing deserving of death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For it was necessary for him to release one to them at the feast. And they all cried out at once, they saying, They all cried, Away with this man, release us to Bar uh, Bar Barabbas who had been thrown into prison for a certain rebellion made in the city and for murder. But they didn't hate him because he was of the world. He could be used by the world to perpetrate his hate in the crowd that was screaming for Barabbas. So when people do child trafficking, the volume of hate, that it takes to do something like that. It's incredible. It's incredible. The slave owners and foremen and wives and everybody that participated in it, the volume of hate 
to do things like that to a fellow man, to children, to humankind, and to a nations with the Nazis did to the Jews, the volume of hate. And you and I look at them and say to ourselves, not understand the depravity that's on the inside of us and the capacity to do the exact same thing. Don't let God bring that test to you and me. See, we look at other people and we hate them, not understanding. There go I. <laughs> Save the grace of God. I could have been on the side of the Nazis in, in, in that generation because I don't understand inside of me dwelleth no good thing. And the capacity to hate is present and be diseased by that very hatred. Some of them people, they couldn't sleep at night. They were on all kinds of drugs and all kinds of um, because how? But the more, every now and then, uh, there are people that, if you will, escape from that kind of hatred, like the guy that wrote um, Amazing Grace. See, but normally, that's fourth stage stuff. <laughs> that's terminal stuff. That level of hatred that you don't escape from it. And we play with things like that, not understanding that it could bring natural sickness as well as spiritual sickness into our beings. So these people have a reprobate mind. The Bible said they're given over to sin, depravity, unprincipled, uncaring, unfeeling. You know, you start off being humanoid and wound up exhibiting the behavior, the Bible says, natural brute beast of worse than animals with no feeling for anything in anybody. I call it fourth stage disease. It's terminal uh, for most if God doesn't have mercy. In Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. In 2 Timothy 3.8 Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, disapproved, or reprobate minds, continue. disapproved concerning the faith. Titus 1.16 They profess to know God, but in works they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. Reprobate, given over to the depravity of the mind and the spirit. When we disregard God's standards for his righteousness, his holiness, his love, his mercy, his goodness, his forgiveness, his justice, all of that, when we disregard it, our, our, his standard for wisdom, for we in effect hate him. And sometimes we don't understand when we're disobedient and rebellion, just like in the case with Stephen. Stephen told them in Acts that you always resist the Holy Spirit. He said you kill the prophets and then you build their sceptres. There's such a depravity to you. And you know why they hated him so much? Because he was telling them the truth, and he was honoring God. They hated them without a call. They put their hands on the ear because they didn't even want to hear the message. And at the end, hate had his way. It murdered him, and God allowed it for his purpose, for his glory. Guess what? Stephen is, is not a problem for Stephen, but we hate people that stand for something that's good and right. And when we do that, we don't understand. We are hating on God ourselves. Matthew 23, verse 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you paid tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. John 15, verse 22 to 23. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. Exodus 5, verse 2. 
And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. Genesis 37, 5 through 8. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. So they hated him even more. And as you know, if you read the story, and I'm sure you've read it, they went on to uh, decided to kill him. But there was an intervention because God intervened for his own purpose because he wanted to show us where hatred leave. And the very person that you hate might wound up being your deliverer one day. In Romans chapter 12, Verse 16 through 21. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. In your own opinion, that you think you are right, or you have the right to interfere with someone else's choice because, they, in your opinion, they're dumb and you've been educated in the system, and you can tell them a thing or two, and they don't need to do this and so forth and on and all of that, that you hate that person over an opinion or position that they take. Well, uh, you're going to wound up on the wrong side of this whole situation. Continue. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Mind your own business, basically. Go ahead. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Proverbs 10, verse 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. In these days, let's try to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, that we don't give room for hatred, particularly and most especially in the house of the living God. So, Father, I thank you. I bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen.